We're going to be making homemade fertilizer today just from some common things that we have either in our pantry or our refrigerator and some of the most important things that everyone hates that grows in our yards and that is weeds. Some of the best fertilizer, some of the most nutritious things that you can find for organic fertilizer are in the weeds that grow in your garden. Hey everyone, this is Dream from Where the Yokels Grow and if you are new here, welcome and if you are returning, I am so glad to see you again. So before we get started and going around and collecting all of the weeds, I wanted to give you a list of the weeds that we're going to be collecting. And that is Southern Chevrolet, Black Medic, Spreading Hedge Parsley, Vetch, Cleavers, or Clevers, however you want to say it, Curly Dock, Prickly So Thistle, Common Hen Bent, Red, red Seeded Dandelion. And those are the weeds that we're going to be uh, kind of cultivating and harvesting here in the yard. Then we'll go over and we'll actually put the ingredients in there. And if you stick around towards the end of the video, we're going to go through each individual weed, talk about whether or not if it has a medicinal use or if you can even go around and gather it and harvest it and eat it in a salad. And then we'll go over the other ingredients and we'll talk about what each one of them adds as the part of the fertilizer at the end. So without further ado, let's go collect some of these weeds. So we have gotten our full bucket of weeds and I've pushed them down. Now you could take these and chop them up with scissors if you want to, um, but most of these I pulled by hand. Only the big thistles were the ones that I cut um, just because I didn't want those thorns in my hands. So from there, you're gonna also need two cups of organic sugar, one jar of molasses and two now I've got Oktoberfest and Modelo here, but two dark beers, and they can be any beer you want. And of course, a bottle opener and a, a little uh, spatula to get the rest of your molasses syrup out. So we're gonna get this all in here and get it mixed up. So we have two cups of sugar in this jar, and we're just gonna pour it in like so. Nothing special, just make sure it goes down in there. We're going to put in two beers. Now if you didn't want to use beer, you could definitely use either some well water or some rain water. Try not to use chlor chlorinated water because we don't want to kill the yeast that we are creating inside of here, which is going to be what feeds the microorganisms as they grow. Last but not least, one jar of molasses. Now, you could omit this part of the process and add four cups of brown sugar if you wanted to. Some people would say with brown sugar, you need to add equal parts of brown sugar. And you can see how many weeds are in here too, however many weeds that you have. But that's really up to you. My mom would also put in her uh, spent coffee grounds in this when she made it. Oh, 
I'm going to get all that molasses out of there. Now if you don't know, molasses itself is an amazing fertilizer, especially for your tomatoes. So it's all in there and we're not going to really do much to it. We'll mix it up a little bit, but not too much. It's kind of sticky at this point. And nature will do the rest. So we are going to cover this, put it in the barn, and leave it alone. And in about, we'll probably check it just to make sure that it is reducing and creating basically juices and get it all condensed down. And then once it is broke down at about, probably about four and a half, I, I give mine six to eight weeks, but in four and a half, you definitely could use it. We will strain it, put it into a bottle. It is a condensed solution. And then we will add like a tablespoon or two tablespoons to one of the two gallon jugs and water everything with it. you enjoyed that little part of the video where instead of me talking and being boring I just decided to put it to some music show you some pictures of each weed so that you can get the information and you can pause the video and write it down as you want it's been about two weeks since I filmed the first part of this video and I decided to wait to do the ending because I wanted to show you the process because some people might see this process and go oh my god it's molding no it is doing its job and it is breaking down and it has built up the yeast inside of the bucket and it is breaking down the material so I wanted to show you this is two weeks in the process now like I said it takes four to eight weeks it depends on how warm it is outside and we've had this fluctuation of hot and cold so I actually brought it up here and put it inside of the greenhouse so it wasn't so cold because we've had days dip down into the low 30s so let me take the camera off the tripod and let me show you what the process looks like. It's a bit gross, so if you have a gag reflex and you don't like things like that, this might not be the part of the video for you. Alright, so I'm going to lift this up, and like I said, if you don't like gross things, this might not be the part of the video for you. So there you go. You can see how it's built up all of the bacteria that's in there and it is slowly breaking things down and it will continue to break down and it looks a little gross right now at this point because it does have you know bacteria is mold and that's just the way it grows but it will eventually turn into a liquid as it continues to go so that's how it looks at two weeks. In four weeks, it'll look completely different. At six weeks, it'll look completely different. And at eight weeks, it'll look completely different. It just takes time to decompose and rot and break down and get all those nutrients out of those weeds. You can see from the beginning of the bucket when we first started filming how fluffy it was and now how flat it's become. And yes, that is bacteria growing in there because we are feeding that bacteria with our sugar so it continues and makes this break down even faster and that's what the beer and the yeast does as well so when you see that process don't freak out just leave it covered and you know honestly we shouldn't let air get to it but we opened it up you know to show you the process but let it sit for six to eight weeks I know I said four weeks in the beginning of the video but I would give it at least six weeks before you squeeze all the water and all the and it is a little gross process I'm not gonna lie to you use a cheesecloth squeeze it all out and get all of those nutrients, those broke down liquids out of those weeds. If you found some value in this video today, please give us a like and a thumbs up. It helps our channel to grow. And again, if you are new here, please consider subscribing because we have lots more garden videos 
coming out in the very near future. We're about to start planning because the weather has shifted. I'm going to push it till the 1st of April before I put any of my peppers and my tomatoes almost all of my plants so until i see you in the next video you all take care of yourselves you keep your heads up and more importantly no matter how you do it you keep growing bye bye y'all